Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. My name is Chad Daly. I work with the Marathon County Public Library, and we are here to talk about uh, some history of the library as part of the Wausau 150th anniversary celebration. We were uh, kindly invited by, by city folks to um, share something about the library. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. Uh, put together a PowerPoint presentation here with some photos and um, all sorts of fun history. We also have, before I go any further, also with us this evening, Don Anderson, the Wausau Poet Laureate, who is going to uh, share some poems with us this evening. We're very happy to have you here as well, Dawn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. Um, so I thought um, we'll have uh, Dawn start us off in just a second, but um, my intent, since this is part of the City of Wausau's uh, 150th celebration, series of celebrations, plural. Uh, I'm going to focus a little more tonight on specifically the Wausau Library. Um, we'll talk about branches a bit and um, get into some of the county library history, um, but I thought we'd focus a little more this evening on the history of the Wausau Library and um, kind of go over things and show some lots of photos and stuff, and um, so we'll, we'll do that now. Um, but before, well, not now, <laughs> we'll get going with that in just a bit, but to, to kind of set the mood for us this evening, Don is going to start us off with a poem. Don, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Chad. So I had a lot of fun just doing um, some reading and research on Wausau and the library, history of the library, in order to come to for the background for this poem. So I'm really excited about your presentation, Chad. And the poem is Out of the Wilderness Came Books. Out of the Wilderness Came Books. Out of the wilderness, that far away place, Wasa, came logging, came industry, came hardworking men, came women and families, came society, came books. A want to share ideas, thought, learning, progress came our library, a library open to all, given to us by industry leaders, Silverthorne, McIndoe, Alexander, Parcher, giving back to the strongbacks, Lawrence, Heath, Buttle, Ruggles, Luce, and many more who built the city. Turn, make sure I turn my mic on. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Don. That's great. Cool. All right, well, let's uh, get things started here. All right. Uh, oops, I don't want to end the meeting. I would kind of like to just hide my stuff here. Collapse, there we go. Okay, now let's start um, just from the beginning. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll focus a little more on the history of the Wausau Library, um, but they kind of intersect and, I mean, there's there's a long history. And how long, you might ask? First known library in Wausau started right around 1871 by the Pine Knot Literary Society, which was a society for men, uh, men only, uh, located in the Wausau River Pilot newspaper office. Um, gentlemen could pay $3 per year or 25 cents per week to access some 700 books on their shelves. A um, little while later, the men hand wisely, I would say, handed <laughs> their collection over to some of the women of Wausau. In fact, the Ladies Literary Club of Wausau who operate the library also requiring membership, uh, a membership fee uh, for nearly 20 years until the late 1800s. And I should say before I go too much further, I, I've done as much as I could in the time I had to try and get as clear a picture of the history as possible, but as you can see, there will be some gaps in between <laughs> um, some monumental things. So, 
Uh, it is around that time, around 1897, that the city of Wausau agrees to fund the library and thus becoming a free, the Wausau Free Public Library. Free meaning, as it's, as you could guess, free for the public. And agreed to pay somewhere uh, right around between 600 and 1,750 annually, which you can see is uh, be about between 20 and 60,000 in today's dollars um, for the purchase of books. And I know it's a little small on the right here, but this is a bill of sale that I found in our archives from 1899 for the Wausau Free Public Library. 19 books for $23.16. Uh, and if you can't see, some of the titles there are Modern Machinist, uh, Polly, Red Rock, uh, something of an American soldier, um, and some others, Little Colonel Dame or something like that. So, um, yeah, kind of interesting there. So late 1890s, almost to 1900, it becomes a free library, open to everybody without any membership fees, anything like that. Um, and that kind of bounced around, that library kind of bounced around a little bit, uh, different places, county courthouse, different places downtown, and none were quite a good fit. And this uh, quote here is from the 1913 History of Marathon County book written by Louis Marchetti. Um, the condition of the library as an educational and popular institution at the at time was not encouraging, and the prospect for immediate improvement was not bright. Um, running expenses consumed the nearly two meager allowance, leaving but a trifling amount for books to say nothing of the want of space for the reading public. That would be at all of these different places. So early 1900s come along, 1904, um, Wausau accepts a $25,000 gift from Andrew Carnegie, the uh, very rich and famous Carnegie who is funding and building libraries all over the country at that time. And that donation eventually increased to 29,000, which would be equivalent to almost $870,000 uh, today. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Carnegie, <laughs> for that one. And thanks for increasing it as well. The land for the library donated in April 1905 by Walter and Sarah Alexander. And that was land owned by Walter's uncle, Walter McIndoe, another familiar name in the Wasa area. And architectural plans are drawn up by George W. Marr, and those are accepted in the middle of 1905. So the library is built, takes a couple of years to build, and this is the earliest known picture that I could find um, that wasn't a scan of a microfilm <laughs> newspaper at the time. Um, so this would be right after it opened, April of 1907. And you can see it's it's a beautiful building. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful building. They did well. And the first librarian, a name you also heard in Don's poem, Miss Nellie Silverthorne, who is the daughter of Willis Silverthorne, founding member of the Pine Knot Literary Society. So it kind of came full circle a little bit. Um, Nellie Silverthorne, first librarian, she also served the Wisconsin State Library Association um, and all sorts of other um, active participation in different clubs and organizations around the Wausau area. A couple more pictures from the library, the one on the top left there from 1910, and that would be looking north. And in the lower right there, Library Park circa 1913, and that would be looking kind of more, I, I said here north, northeast, but that would be more east, kind of southeast. Um, so you can see along with the building, they really went all out and um, land was added so that they could add in this park. And you can actually see, um, this picture was fairly recently taken after a lot of this stuff was planted. 
Um, and so this would be this picture over here in the bottom right. Um, you can kind of see in the upper left some of the sidewalks, but you can see a little bit more of this postcard in the bottom right, kind of looking in a different direction. And this was a recent photo that was discovered over at the Marathon County Historical Society. Um, ben and Gary over there were a big help, or a huge help putting this together, uh, this presentation together. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. But this is a, an aerial photo taken May of 1922. And it's just a wonderful picture. And it really helps kind of put things in perspective. And I've kind of circled the library and the library park right here in the middle. And this would be the courthouse. So to give you some perspective, if we go back to the last slide, if you look in the bottom right postcard, this is the courthouse right there and the courthouse right there. So that kind of gives you an angle, uh, gives you some kind of sense on, on what you're looking at. And this up here in the upper right was the new courthouse that was built um, not too long after that. So. A really fun photo. Uh, you can see, I um, believe this is Jefferson right here, uh, and I, I think um, River right here down in the corner to kind of give you some perspective. Cool, cool picture. Taken by Gus to Burren. A couple more pictures of the library, pretty similar to the other ones, but it's just so nice to look at. <laughs> 1912 and 1914, these pictures were taken. And the library was popular by the uh, almost, uh, you know, by the late 1900s, you know, between 19, when it opened in 1907 and 1910, um, nearly 15, 5,800 patrons borrowed more than 50,000 books and library collection or checked out books 50,000 times because the library con collection was only about 8,000 books at the time. Um, so this letter that you see here comes from the um, Wisconsin Free Library Commission, and it's saying basically, uh, you have a great library, it's super busy, we're gonna send somebody up to help you <laughs> from Madison. Uh, basically kind of like an intern, or uh, maybe, or uh, maybe not an intern, I hope the person got paid to, to be up there, but yeah, very busy, they needed help. And this from uh, one of the Wausau newspapers by 1923, things just keep picking up. The library just keeps building and building and circulation keeps growing and growing as does the number of card holders. Um, this from uh, an early 1924 article, just kind of giving a recap on the year before. Total circulation, 114,000 in 1923. Um, Card holders about 13,000, um, and new books added in 1923, a little over a thousand. And it's so busy and so popular, and they're so constrained. Um, this is the last paragraph of the article here um, that I found really interesting. The crying need of the library now is more room. The shelves are packed, books are piled on tables, and over everything. Strangers coming invariably say, why, this library is so crowded, you need more room, don't you? Just imagine <laughs> people saying that, and the staff getting really annoyed with people saying that all the time, too, probably. Uh, it is the hope of the library board that it will be possible soon to get an appropriation of money that will allow for additional library room. Well, um, Kind of jumping ahead a little bit, this is just another picture from the 1930s. I don't have an exact date, but looking north northeast. All right, so the help for the overcrowded uh, library comes in 19, the late 1920s. There is a 4,000 square foot addition uh, funded by the estate of Miss Mary, Mrs. Mary Parcher. Uh, and that increased the floor space of the library to about 15,000 square feet. The Parcher donation was $65,000, and it was stipulated in the estate that it was to be used to, for the betterment of Wausau. So city folks decided this would be uh, a good use for some of that money. And total cost of the addition uh, was about $80,000, which 
not only in the 1920s, but, you know, right around the Depression time, you know, it's, it's a lot now. It's not, it was certainly nothing to sneeze at then. Um, and I did find the original program for the Parcher Memorial. You can see here um, the addition. I believe this was the addition here. I had a devil of a time trying to figure out exactly where the addition was. Um, because I think this is uh, coming out from Library Park. This would be along First Street. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but they added on. And you can see here some of the folks involved in the dedication. This is from an article on that dedication. Journalists were very uh, eloquent and um, yeah, flowery in their in their writing, which is really nice. Many magnificent cut flowers in appropriate baskets and containers stood at the front of the rostrum and in their small way attested to the happiness of all those who have been interested in the progress of this institution. Isn't that nice? <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to take a short break here. And for those of you watching who um, are participating in the Passport to Wausau stamp program, get your passports out. And your assignment or your stamp for the month is your own. You are to draw a book in your square for a February event. And uh, if you are just watching and would like to, or, and not participating, but you would like to, would like to maybe pick up a Passport to Wausau passport book, you can pick those up at City Hall Customer Service, the Marathon County Historical Society, or MCPL Wausau. Let's see. <clears throat> So I'm gonna drink a little more water here and it's a good time to take a break from me talking. Um, Dawn, would you like to maybe share another poem with us before I continue? Yeah, my microphone back on, can you hear me? Yes, yep. Okay, okay, good. You know, and I, I have so many poems and I was thinking, do you know tonight's theme really is about its history and it's looking back and it's remembering and I've been working um, with the folks at the landing for the Y. That's the um, over 55 uh, portion of the of the YMCA. And I've been teaching some memoir classes there and have taught them through the University Students Point as well. So I thought, you know, this really fits perfectly with this sesquicentennial year. So I've chosen a few poems that um, come from you know my family history and other you know in more general history so I'll start with one that um, I wrote for my history called Taproot. Taproot. When we burst forth from the womb we sink it down into the homestead of our grandfathers a new umbilical cord connection to the bones of old, a taproot to anchor generations to come in the cocoon of life, earth, and death. We are the trees running deep, nurtured by the land, land from which we grew and to which we will return, feeding with our wisdom, experiences, our DNA, our humus, the new children who carry us with them through the great cycle. Today we are all together, held by the family taproot, held to the fields and barns and woods, held as one great soul, knowing that eternity lies within us. And that's taproot. And um, a little more general one, here's one I wrote for National Poetry Writing Month, which happens every year and is really fun if you um, want to challenge yourself to write a poem every month in April. And this one was, um, I read a lot of poems based on stamps. And this was a, a stamp from Norway. And I was thinking about, my, I'm 54% Scandinavian heritage. And so um, the poem that was inspired by this uh, Norwegian photo was called 
Norse blood. And I thought that it was appropriate for tonight because there's um, a lot of uh, Scandinavian, um, Scottish, German immigrants were the first ones to come to Wisconsin and and cut the trees. And it was logging that um, really we have to thank for our, our fair city. So the poem is Norse blood. As I go out to give fat and corn to the birds in the hard blowing snow and hail, walking through the drifts knee high on this mid-April day in Wisconsin, I am grateful for my Norse blood, a northern hardiness facing the elements, shirking no task, living close to the land with an eye on the moon and stars. We are the original green witches coaxing barley and turnips out of the lean soil in the short growing season. A social people farming in little villages, stockpiling hay to feed the cows and sheep, kept indoors in winter. Despite the livestock in the next bedroom, we were a well-groomed folk, a bath every Saturday and a comb and ear pick in every home. Handsome and strong, of good cheer and easy laugh, with a temper not to rouse, Farmer, family man, kinsman, and thrivers of the northern land. That's a lovely. Dog. So I have some more chat. Yeah. Would you like me to go in or save a few? Um, let's see. Maybe we could save one or two for the end, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. I have yeah. a nice. I have a nice um, full page one for the end. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. And I really. Uh, I mean, I, I really like both of them, um, but Taproot uh, was especially um, a, a good pick because uh, it's a good segue um, because we are going to head out of the city and out into the fields <laughs> of Marathon County uh, and talk about libraries outside of the county a little bit. Short detour out of Wausau. Um, Almost as old as the Wausau Library is the Mosinee Library, the Joseph Dessert Memorial Library. He uh, owned one of the mills in town, or I think maybe the mill, um, and uh, decided his employees and others needed some culture in their lives. So he put up the money not only to build the library, but also to fill it with books. Um, this beautiful building in Mosinee, which is obviously still there, uh, designed by the firm of A.C. Eschweiler, and it was included in the National and State Register of Historic Places in 1980. So, um, believe it or not, and we'll get into this a little bit, um, the Marathon County Public Library has not always uh, been the Marathon County Public Library. Um, it uh, was started 1937 as a Works Progress Administration or WPA project. Um, and county, I believe, put up, I want to say, 5,000 uh, or was, was given 5000 for it um, and some more funding to purchase a bookmobile. And so this picture you see is the very first bookmobile uh, used in Marathon County. And these folks standing in front of it are all members of the library board at the time. I apologize, I don't have all of their names, but um, I love that bus, that thing's great. <laughs> um, so a little branch history, and here is where we kind of skip ahead uh, into different sections of history. So by 1954, there are 15 different library stations across the county. Not full-on libraries, but basically sort of like pop-up um, pop libraries uh, that where, where books are delivered via bookmobile. Uh, and that includes the towns of Halder, Norrie, Byrne, and others. And by 1984, that uh, 15 had uh, consolidated down to 12, which included, uh, still included, libraries in Brokaw, Little Chicago, and Unity. And instead of rest in peace, I say read in peace because they are no longer with us, uh, or part of our system. Currently, 
We have nine locations. There's the Wausau headquarters and eight branches around the county. Athens, Edgar, Huntley, Marathon City, Mosinee, Spencer, ooh, Rothschild, Stratford, and Wausau. So for this next part, we're gonna yeah just see some pictures here and um, a little more. These uh, pictures were taken, both of them 1992. This is where the uh, Marathon City branch was located. Uh, I love this because that's I mean that just screams like tavern window to me. <laughs> it looks like you're going into a bar of some sort and not a library, which I think is cool. And maybe it tricked some people. <laughs> On the right there, you see what was then the Brokaw branch or location. Also on the left there from 92, Spencer's uh, library, which is in their municipal building. And it still is actually, I mean, different building, but it, Spencer's branch is in its village hall, as is Edgar's and Rothschild's. Um, trying to think if there's others, Athens as well. Um, yeah, I'm probably forgetting at least one, but I love this picture of the library in Unity from 92, mainly because of that sweet ride out front. <laughs> which is definitely built before 1992. Um, so that picture is to me is, could be taken in 72, could be in 92. Um, some more places. Our Stratford branch dates back to at least 1930 and was housed in their village office from 1947 to 1995 when this current building was built and Stratford joined the county library system in 1949. And on the right, there was once a branch, some of you may know, in Schofield and that merged, uh, this is a picture of it at Schofield City Hall, merged with the Rothschild branch uh, in 1999. All right, so getting back to Wausau. So by the um, late or mid to late, uh, early to mid 60s, um, it was pretty obvious that the library in Wausau needed, uh, they needed more room. So they needed another addition. And so the decision was made to uh, build an addition. And you can see, I found this at the Historical Society uh, one of the original drawings. So you can see the original building here, the Parcher family edition, uh, the Parcher estate edition, which is a lot bigger than the original, and the really big edition that was added in 1965. Picture on the left here, breaking ground for, or Proposed edition, excuse me, proposed edition as of 1965 because they didn't break ground until 19 or 1966. And that's this picture here you see on the left, December 20th of 1966, as the newspaper noted, the loose dirt appeared imported for the occasion. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> what they led with um, because it was so cold, they had to basically dump some dirt on the ground so it looked like they were breaking ground. Uh, on the left, you have Dorothea Krause, uh, Krause um, uh, uh, excuse me, chief librarian, um, Mrs. Judd Alexander there in the middle, and Roland Penn, president of the library board. So the edition goes on, and some photos from that, from the summer of 1967, summer of love. So you can see, um, <clears throat> Judging by this little headlight here right in the middle of your screen, um, I think this would be First Street. So we're looking kind of north, northwest. Um, so I think this would be what you're seeing here in this picture on the left would be somewhere here, if you can see my arrow. Um, coming out on the south side of the building. Hard to see that lovely building being <laughs> 
torn apart, uh, or at least part of it, but it was necessary to make such a big addition. And so once construction was complete, um, this is what it looked like. And I have to say, like, no offense, any library is better than no library, but it's, it's a weird mix of architecture here. I, it's great that they tried to um, save as much of the original as they could, um, but the additions that went on to it, understandably, <laughs> I guess, because it was the 60s, did not quite match. Um, I don't have a date on this photo, but judging by the cars, including that Firebird there, uh, I believe this is late 60s, early 70s, not too long after the addition was completed. And just a picture here from the newspaper at the time, Wausau Daily Record Herald of 1966. Um, the microfilm was not in great shape, so it's a little tough to see who these people are, but I can make out Kermit Gertz, or Getz, president of the library board, Henry Arnsbrack of Madison, chairman of the Wisconsin Citizen Committee for Library Development, former board member, um, and I think there on the right, uh, you see in the screen, is uh, former Wausau Mayor John Kennenberg. And uh, in the upper left here, you can see this would be the um, another view of the new addition from the south side of the building. And here on the right, a nice, big, great, bright photo of the circulation and reference area um, as part of the 1968 edition. So my guess, and again, this is a guess, is you're sort of looking out toward First Street um, because if you can kind of see the uh, windows back here in the upper right corner of the picture, there are cars parked all along the street, um, which I think seems to kind of match up with this or possibly these windows here. Uh, I'm not quite sure on that, but in the new addition, the circulation and reference area. So we come to 19, the early 1970s, and um, I, I, maybe I had forgotten this in my own history as an employee of the library, but yeah, it was not until 1972 that discussions began to combine the Wausau Public Library and the Marathon County Library. Um, makes sense, both libraries had huge collections, the county library was at the county courthouse. They were short on space. Um, the Wausau Public Library just has this huge new addition to it, so they have lots of space. And so the city council and the county board get together and hammer things out, and the merger is approved in July of 1973, goes into effect January 1st, 1974. And the collection of the Marathon County Library is moved from the courthouse to the Wausau Public Library, and it becomes the Marathon County Public Library. Excuse me, taking a drink there. All right, so we're going to jump way ahead for another picture. And once again, um, so by you know 30 years or so. The uh, the addition and the li the addition built in the late 60s, as well as the original Carnegie Library and the Parcher Edition falling into disrepair, leaky roofs, all sorts of stuff happening. So it was decided to pretty much completely rebuild. And this picture on the left is from uh, 1995, as construction is taking place. And on the right here is one of the um, original diagrams or kind of kind of blueprint design for the new library. Um, and I had to ask Gary Gisselman over at the Historical Society about this. Uh, I was like, well, there was plans for a civic center? 
like some kind of performing arts center, something like that. This, I don't know if you can see it very well. This says events tent. Um, and sure enough, that was the plan, um, but it obviously fell through um, for various reasons that we don't really need to get into here. So pretty much what remained was the library, and instead of a civic center, we have a small parking lot. <laughs> uh, and the Whiffley building uh, is there as well. Um, so that's nice too. Uh, all right. Okay, so let me check my time here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. So I thought um, to kind of round things out, um, we would share some pictures, uh, some more pictures, I should say. Uh, then and now. So then, uh, I do not know the date of this picture. I do know this was the very last bookmobile that MCPL had, and this would be in our basement, uh, basement level facing the parking lot on the west side of the building. At one point, that was a garage big enough to fit an entire bus and van. And our friends of MCPL, some of you I'm sure recall, uh, for a long time hosted their uh, used book sale up on our third floor. You can see on the right here, these were a couple of pictures taken from uh, a book sale back in 2016. And now, instead of a garage on the left there, our friends of MCPL has been moved into that space and it's been uh, renovated. If you've come to a friend's book sale recently, you know, um, but for those of you who haven't, that's what's there now. And our third floor currently, I feel like I'm giving away some like closely held secret here, but it's not really. This is currently what our third floor looks like. Unoccupied, um, but we are, uh, we have had discussions with some folks who are interested uh, in possibly occupying all of that space up there. There are limitations. There have been things discussed in the past, Children's Museum, there are some limitations to what can go up there. So uh, we're just, in discussions with here here and there and just waiting and, and working to try and find the right fit up there. Um, also on the third floor, um, if you um, ever went to an event up there, you know this space. Uh, it was uh, kind of all the way uh, at the end of the, um, if you're looking at this picture all the way back here, I'm trying to think which side of the, oh, that would be the south side of the building. So that's where we used to have our bigger community events, our bigger library events, and that was our biggest space for the public to reserve. At the moment, where there's some temporary art storage in there, but we've also, uh, at least for now, we uh, are using it as a filming studio to record our virtual story time videos um, and some other things in there as well. And we've moved our biggest community room um, that was renovated, I want to say 2017, and this is our, our biggest community room now is on the second floor, uh, and that's what, it's look, that's what it looks like. That's also reservable by the public, and we use it for library events as well. Uh, these pictures look a little weird. It's because I used the panoramic feature on my phone um, so I could try and get it all in. The top picture that you see is what our first floor uh, rotunda area looks like right now. You can see all of the windows back there. If you haven't been in since we reopened back in June of last year, you really should stop by. Um, but we did some pretty substantial renovations to the Wausau Library. Uh, previously, in this first floor rotunda area was all fiction. That all has now been moved to the second floor, which you see in the bottom photo here. Um, all of these shorter shelves are the fiction, and you can kind of see on the right side here, these taller shelves are all of the nonfiction. Now on the first floor, we have audiobooks, DVDs, some booths, and other seating. Um, and we've also moved our teen area from the second floor down to the first floor, uh, and it's here on the right side, so we can get it a little closer to our children's and tween area. Our second floor computer area, I do not miss these days. 
pre-2021 where we had 30 computers all lined up against the wall. Um, I mean, it was great. It's great that we're able to offer so many computers for the public, but um, I really like the space that we have now, which you see on the right. This is post renovations from last year. We've spaced things out. We've also moved some of the computers down to the first floor. Um, just a few of them. Most of them are still up on the second floor. And our children's area. Gone through a few changes. Uh, if you were to go into the children's area in 1937, I really think you would have to be told you were in the children's area. This does not look <laughs> like it was meant to um, interest children. Much more so um, by the time we get to 1968. Uh, they plus, you know, in 68 too, they just have much more room and they could kind of choose how they wanted it laid out. So I'm not sure on the, the picture on the left, I'm not sure how tall these shelves are, if they're the same height as they ended up being in, in the 60s. Um, but yeah, that's the children's area post-1968 edition. And our couple of shots of our children's area today. Uh, we really spread things out across the entire floor. Um, we uh, also have a kind of a designated tween area. Um, although this uh, painting on the wall probably would have been nice in the uh, psychedelic 60s. <laughs> or maybe it's a carryover from that. I don't know. Um, but it's nice and bright uh, in that children's area now. And of course, we cannot forget about the aquarium that we have in our children's area, built in 2011 by Acrylic Tank Manufacturing. It is a 650 gallon saltwater tank. Found this article uh, over at the Historical Society, the latest in technology in 1995. Patrons can stay at home and check out their library. Imagine that. Uh, some instructions on how to do that. Dial. Uh, this number, your modem, should be set at 8N1 with a baud rate of either 1,200 or 2,400. Um, neither myself nor my coworker, Ben, who's very tech savvy, uh, could remember what a baud rate is. <laughs> um, but basically, this was an article from 1995 uh, on how people could log on to the World Wide Web and get to the library's website and reserve library books from their home, which was a pretty awesome deal back then. Um, and now certainly patrons can still do that. Not only can they reserve books online, they can check out books online, um, both, or you know, check out eBooks um, and electronic audiobooks. And you can see, this is just a short list of some of the many things that you can do through our website online now, some of our online resources. Quite a bit. And now a few of the people. Um, we have more pictures of buildings in our archives than we do of people, but I, I did pull a few out here. Pat Schoonover, an employee of Wausau in 1960. Uh, on the right, Gertrude Tanowitz, who worked the Wausau Reference Desk also in 1960. I just love this article from 1948 here in the middle when the uh, president of the Altrusa Club presenting a record player with two, sorts, two sets of earphones to Miss Dorothea Krause in the center there uh, on behalf of the club. Miss Gertrude Schultz of the library staff is checking the new instrument with one set of headphones. So. Uh, that must have been a pretty cool deal in 1948 to be able to go to the library and listen to records. Uh, or maybe they already could and they just got a new record player. I'm not sure, but I like it. A few more of the people. Kay Buer uh, was a county librarian. We've already mentioned Dorothea. And our staff, our the staff, back in 1974. So much color in those clothes, so much hair. <laughs> Um, since I don't think he's uh, joining us tonight, I will go ahead and point out what he might not want to, but there is, uh, if you can see, Gary Gisselman, former library employee, who is now over at the Historical Society doing great work as well there. And a picture from our uh, Mosny branch uh, in 1979. 
So, just to bring us up to uh, the future, last year um, in our collection, nearly 300 books, 300,000 books in print, uh, 168,000 ebooks, and 65,000 electronic audiobooks available, nearly 30,000 videos, 20,000, more than 20,000 audiobooks and CDs. Total circulation last year. 572,000, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually uh, dropped. Uh, it, that was that's still that's pandemic circulation. Still, uh, we expect this year to be much much higher. Um, and even within the past five years, it's it's topped a million uh, as far as total circulation. So, um, but average daily circulation about 1,500. Total number of card holders about 77,000 and New books added to our new print books, I should say, added last year, 26,000. So we're adding new stuff all of the time, as well as weeding stuff out too. So, all right, that uh, does it for my presentation. Um, before we hand it off to Dawn to maybe kind of finish things out, um, does anybody have any questions? For me, um, as a library employee, you're welcome to just ask via your microphone and camera, or if you don't want to do that, feel free to uh, type a question in the chat feature. Hi, this is Jean Frankel. <laughs> I wanted to say you blew it away. This was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, I look at these pictures and I grew up here, so I... I can I could see those pictures and it really reminded me of what it was like and I was a library nut so in the summer uh, I pretty much lived in the bathtub at the library. Awesome, yeah. I found a picture of and them bathtubs been around for a long time. I think I found one that was from around seven some mid seventies I think USS Daydreamer I believe it was called and they yep that'd be right yep. Well, oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much. That's very kind of you to say. I'm glad this brought back some good memories. Did you recognize any of the people? Um, well, Gary, but not necessarily the people. I don't. I don't remember. The only person I remember is Sharon, which she's well, she's fairly young, I guess. She's probably retired mm -hmm. now, but she was Sharon the Island. Yep. Sharon Island. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. Many, many yeah, hours. She was there for a long time and drove the bookmobile quite a bit. And um, yep. I thought I had added on, I guess I didn't. Um, the Historical Society was really cool. And I meant to throw it in the presentation. It had from 1980 or 1981 a schedule of the bookmobile's route so you could oh. see all the places around the county that it would go. Uh, it was really cool and it was a lot of places. Um, yeah. I mean, that bookmobile was a, a lifeline for a lot of people outside of Wausau, and that's great. And one thing I didn't mention, one of the reasons, one of the reasons they decided, among many, that decided to merge the Wausau and county libraries is something like 30 or 40 percent of the people who were using the Wausau library lived outside of Wausau anyway. So um, it made sense to kind of just, yeah, include all of those. So. Well, thanks, Jean. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Don, are you going to do um, the 150th poem? Oh, should I save that for a different event, or do you want me to pull that one? It doesn't yeah. matter to me. I, 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 have, I loved it. It was awesome. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I don't know if I have it on this computer, so maybe I'll do the other memory piece that I, that I have fine. pulled up. And well, and for those of you watching, we have more poems in the poem that Jean is referencing. So stay tuned for other 150 year sesquicentennial events. Yeah, you're going to be busy, Don, which is great. <laughs> All here. Busy. Um, so I don't see any other questions at the moment. So Don, why don't you, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to, again, type them in the chat. Um, or you can always um, stop by the library anytime. We're happy to give you a tour or answer any questions you might have, whether it's online resources, in-house resources, any of that stuff. Um, we're happy to um, show anybody around and, and explain all of the many, many art 
Our reference shelf is uh, much smaller than it probably was for most folks uh, back in the day, um, but our online resources, the amount of things available online is uh, staggering, and we have access to a ton of it. So, um, yeah, we're happy. We want, obviously, we want people to know they can use anything at the library anytime. So, yeah. Um, and with that, Don, I will hand it back over to you. Good. Uh, and I do have to comment too. I remember the bookmobile. I, I was lived in Wisconsin or in Rib Mountain when I was a little kid. And I remember it coming to the grocery store about a mile away. And I've talked to other people too, who lived out in the country and that was like their lifeline to have the bookmobile coming. So, um, so yeah, the library did have quite a reach. And speaking of childhood memories, I thought I'd end with a piece that I wrote for a lady um, who wanted to remember an important Important childhood. You know, we're we are, we're all about lakes and nature here in Wisconsin, and she wanted this memory, um, Captain. I think this is this is a good one to end on, especially since it takes place in the summer and we're in the midst of winter right now. So, um, this is my friend Bonnie's childhood memory. A chorus of frogs takes me back, back to a childhood place my grandmother's cottage porch in the north woods of Wisconsin. It was an old family cot cabin on the lake. It seemed like a big lake with sloshing shores, wetting and re-wetting the round rocks beneath the closest trees, leaning over the water, clinging to the edge of solid earth. Some had fallen into the lake, given in to the wind or age or rot. Father said they made good fishing spots, those fallen trees. I was too small to go fishing after dinner, so stayed back on the porch while Grandma washed the dishes. I'd listen to those frogs and wonder where they were hidden. They were loud, yet I couldn't see even one. Grandmother would empty the dishpan over the side of the porch in a wave of soapy water arching over the side rail. Sometimes she had missed a fork or spoon, and it would surf on the wave landing on the grass. She would chuckle, saying half to me, half to herself, as she clomped down the stairs to after the errant utensil. At least I didn't throw the baby out with the bath water. It seemed a silly thing to say. She'd bring me a big, bright plastic cup full of lemonade, and I soon forgot my musings on forks and babies. She would rock in her creaky rocking chair, drinking lemonade. It was the only time I ever saw her sit down in the evening with her lemonade when everyone but me was gone fishing. She'd say the lemonade was made in the shade by an old maid with a rusty spade. Must have been the rust that made it taste so good. I never spilled my lemonade. It seemed such a privilege to sit on that big old bed swing under the eaves. I'd snuggle deep in the worn cotton quilts and big pillow with my tiny white, with tiny white feathers peeking out from the seam. The twitter of frogs sang backdrop to the slow croaking operatic bullfrog and the steady creak of the rocking chair like a droning heartbeat. Lulled by this harmonious serenade and cottony warmth, I'd soon slip into a smiling sleep. While I'm sure the frogs continued on, I soundly slept, awakened only by the sweet, tart, fishy smell on my father's shirt as his soft voice, low and quiet, said, off to bed, my little Bonnie. So I'll leave you with that childhood memory of the lake. Wonderful. It's a great way to end things. Thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. This has been fun. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, happy to do it. Um, yeah, uh, I guess we'll call it a night. Uh, I don't see any other questions or anything. so. Um, yeah, thanks again for joining us, everybody. Take care, and uh, yeah, thanks for supporting you your local event. library. <laughs> yep, thank you. <laughs> thank you.